Hello everyone, welcome back to another What's the Play. It's been a while since I've recorded one, I've been a little bit busy trying to uh, brush up on Legacy and Vintage in preparation for Eternal Weekend, but there was a What's the Play sent in by DarthDog90 a few weeks ago on Twitter. Again, if you want to send one in, uh, consider coming to the Discord, tweeting at me, or getting in touch with me via any of the links below. And also, if you enjoy the stuff, hit that button, hit that follow button, leave a comment, show support of the YouTube channel in any sort of way, or check me out on Twitch. And again, thanks for being here. Uh, let's get straight to the situation. So uh, this is game one of Yorion Death and Taxes versus Nia Depths. As you can see, uh, we're kind of deep into the game. It's turn six for Darth Dog, and I think they were on the play according to the turn log. I actually know their opponent, um, a friend of mine. They do like Dark Depths in general. They like green cards, <laughs> generally speaking. So uh, not surprising to see them play Nia Depths. So the question this turn is, what do you do, and what do you think is in their hand? I think, personally, if you track the game log on the right-hand side, there's not really that many like super threatening cards that they could have. I think you can write a Wasteland off, because they didn't play a land last turn. I don't think you can write a Crop Rotation off. And I think... It's not likely that they have a third plow because there are two sorts of postures in the graveyard. So the real question is, how do you get them to sort of use their stuff in such a way that you can either bait them into making the wage, which costs them a lot of resources, or you can clear their board slowly? So uh, first thing to note is you can probably bait a lot of things if you start by equipping Jite to your Lion Sash. Well, okay, let's, let's think it all the way through. So what you can do is, for the sake of argument, if you wanted to attack with an equipped Jite this turn, you probably want to play your port out, equip, that leaves you with three white up, you can attack. If they block with Reclaimer, great. You can initiate by activating uh, Lion Sash, targeting, say, their Taiga. Then they have to decide if they want to Reclaimer then. If they don't Reclaimer, your Sash will be a 2-2. Two -two. Then you can, you know, activate targeting again on one of their lands. If they don't respond to that, they'll be 3-3. Three -three. And then you can just activate targeting again, uh, targeting another of lands. If they decide to bog you then, or bog themselves, I guess to counter the activation, they'll have a 1-2 Reclaimer versus your 2-2 two -two or 3-3 three -three Lion Sash, depending on exactly when they do it. So my gut instinct is play Rashad in port, equip by tapping, you know, say, planes in port, moving up all three white sources, Attack them. Uh, they will basically never block with Sylvan Safekeeper, so their options are make wage, block, but they don't have enough mana to protect it. Even if they do somehow have the crop rotation, you have enough ways to interact with the wage that I don't think it's a big deal. Like, you can Solitude pitch Thalia, you can, uh, well, I mean, you'll go for the Crocus first, you can Solitude pitch Thalia. Let's see what exactly happens. If they suppose they activated tapping plateau, savannah, stage, copy, they're down three lands. You can go to 24 life when they block, or you can Krakus, they'll sack another land. So they'll be down to one more land. You can Solitude Pitch Thalia. They'll activate again, then you can play Karakas and activate on their turn. So I think it works out for you, except I guess the problem there is with my suggestion of playing Port first, that might end up poorly. So maybe it's actually better to tap both of your planes first, equip, attack, 
do all of those things I described first, and it still sort of works out for you. Um, I think basically they will almost never block with Wage here because it's just so easy for it to backfire on them. Especially since you haven't used a source of posture shares yourself. So basically, um, I think once the GTA connects in any sort of fashion, you can start gunning down their safekeeper, which makes it hard to have protected wage as well. Uh, I, I would say generally from the depth side, the way that they win this matchup is to have a bunch of giant pr protected knight of the row queries. So ideally, you could save your removal for knights and just deal with the wage some other way. And GTA getting you above 20 life is a good way to do that. So my play would be, I think, tap both your planes, equip Lion Sash, attack, see what they do. You can always activate the... Uh, if they do block the Reclaimer, you can still activate it twice going after it lands in their graveyard. And it works out for you. I guess... Maybe that doesn't really work out. Hmm. I'm just I'm trying to think it out all the way through. What if we Hmm. One second. Let me let me think about it again. Actually. I do think you want to equip the GTA and attack, but the question is what else you do? No, I, I think tapping both of your planes to equip GTA and attacking first is the best. It really depends on how they respond from there, but I think basically this is the best way to get the safekeeper off the board. It's the best way to keep yourself above 20 life. I think it, it kind of just works out the best if you do that. So yeah, that's my answer. I would tap two lands, equip GTA, attack, see what they do. If they block with Reclaimer, you start going after lands in their graveyard. If they block with Lage, if they make Lage, you can Caracas. Or So if they make Lage, I guess the best way to do it is to... Let them block first, actually, because they'll probably only block with a Lage. Attempt to Caracas it. They probably will safekeeper them, sacking another land. Um, then you just let your creature die, you play your Caracas, say go, you will be at 24 life. Let's see, no. Actually, it gets kind of convoluted. Let's see. It, mm. I'm not going to try to work out all of the permutations of what they could do. This also depends on what's in their hand. But my instinct is to attack first off, equipping the two planes first. But there's certainly a lot of ways it could play out. Just think the safekeeper really needs to go, because at some point it's going to be a really, really, really big issue. So uh, that's my play. Tap two planes, equip, attack, see what happens. And then there's a bunch of like branching possibilities after that. Again, if you enjoy the stuff, uh, look below, leave a comment. Subscribe, and uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you all next time.